Good morning, everyone. I'm Laisha Ward from Target, or Target, as some of you like to say. <laughs> and I'm honored to be here. Target is excited to be an official sponsor of the Conference for Women and to celebrate all of you. As a company, we're guided by a single purpose, to help all families discover the joy of everyday life. We know women play an essential role in every family, so that's why we want to recognize you and all that you've achieved, experienced, and overcome to be the best version of yourself and to make a difference in the lives of others. Through our celebration of women, we invited you to share stories. We received inspiring, heartfelt, sometimes heartbreaking, yet triumphant stories. In just a moment, we're going to reveal the five women whose stories we're going to honor who are here today. And they will also receive a $500 gift card from Target. Yeah. In recognizing them, I'm going to read a brief excerpt from a poem by Pearl Clegg, We Speak Your Names, which was commissioned by Oprah in celebration of women. She names women who have influenced and shaped her and thanks them. And it's in that spirit that I want to thank today's winners and all of you. Because we are wise women, born of wise women, who are born of wise women, we celebrate your wisdom. Because we are strong women, born of strong women, who are born of strong women, we celebrate your strength. We celebrate your courage. We celebrate your spirit. We celebrate your genius. We celebrate your loving kindness. Now please join me in recognizing today's honorees. Now hold your applause until we've shared each of their stories. And now I'll speak their names. Bella Gilbert. 18 years ago, Bella was compulsively overeating, $90,000 in debt and in an unhealthy marriage with an alcoholic husband. Then she got a divorce and with her children joined a church where she found the community her family needed. She lost 90 pounds and got out of debt. Eight years ago, she married again, this time to a man who was kind, generous, and supportive. Bella said, today I have many things to be thankful for, including the relief of the debt and learning how to manage my money, the physical restoring and emotional healing. Next, we celebrate Kate Schmidt. Listen to her words. For almost a year, I was sexually abused and assaulted at work by my supervisor. I was pregnant at the time, so in a highly vulnerable place, and he emotionally manipulated me into believing that if I told anyone what was happening, that my job would be at stake. Fearing that I would be unable to provide for my family, I stayed quiet. I had so much shame. That supervisor left, and I was later promoted to a leadership position. I leaned into the discomfort of sharing my story, daring to be vulnerable with my current boss and tell him what had happened to me. I've also gone to the professional board that my former supervisor is licensed under. Hopefully, that will prevent him from abusing other women. Next, Cassandra Melgar de Baca. In 1990, Cassandra left the Air Force and entered the private sector. For many years, she struggled while putting herself through school. She received her MBA, found her dream job at an ad agency, and then went on to launch several businesses. In 2010, she started a nonprofit to support women veterans. One year later, she was recognized by the White House as the first female veteran champion of change. This year, she became the CEO of the Vetted Foundation, which transitions military leaders into the private sector. But what makes Cassandra feel truly successful, she wrote, are the people around me who are doing great things because I was able to lift them up, empower them, and provide them with the resources to be their own superhero. Now we celebrate Emily Salazar. For 22 years, Emily was her mother's companion and sole caretaker. My Facebook page, she writes, shows us as inseparable. 
In the last two years, her mother was wheelchair bound, had dementia, and underwent three surgeries. Whenever she was hospitalized, Emily writes, I spent every night with her. And when I was working, we connected via FaceTime. Taking care of my mother seemed like a small payback for all that she and my father did for me while I was growing up. The last few months of her life, she was under hospice care. I was determined to keep my mother's life as normal as possible in our home. Being a caretaker to a parent is a challenge, but I wouldn't have done it any other way. Finally, we celebrate Alicia Schlockman. Alicia was born into poverty in a border town to an immigrant migrant family and became the first in her family to graduate college. By 2016, she achieved everything she ever wanted. I had a newborn, a good career, and a great life, she writes. My dream lasted three months. Four days before my 37th birthday, I learned that I had a brain tumor. I had to survive, but I didn't know how. Then I noticed my baby imitating me. When I smiled, she smiled. This realization helped me face the challenges that seemed insurmountable. I couldn't have bemoaned the 16-hour brain surgery that left me scarred, bruised, and swollen. Instead, I was thankful for the surgeon that saved my sight, for my husband's support and my daughter's smile that fills me with love. When facing challenges, we set the example. We carry the responsibility of hope. Bella, Kate, Cassandra, Emily, and Alicia, we celebrate your wisdom and strength, your courage and spirit, your genius and loving kindness. And we celebrate all of the women in this room. Thank you all.